Pack your bags, Teresa. We're going to the Gulf Coast. Alabama. You got that right. <laughs> you guys know Teresa and I love traveling, which is why we couldn't be more excited about our new sponsor, Spectrum Resorts. They have two incredible properties on the Gulf Coast, so you can get away from it all at either the Beach Club or Turquoise Place. And right now, get $200 off your stay at either resort by booking directly through Spectrum Resorts using promo code POD1. That's P-O-D and the number one. Book the Beach Club for a relaxing, safe, and secluded beach resort vacation or Turquoise Place and experience the epitome of luxury with hot tubs and grills on every balcony along with a lazy river and other world-class amenities. You'll love the best time at either resort with dining, shopping, resort-style pools, plus organized activities and so much more. Doesn't this sound amazing, guys? Amazing, Teresa. Just make sure you book directly through Spectrum Resort for amazing perks at either property, including discounts on dining, spa, treatments, and more. Plus, at Turquoise Place, you'll even get complimentary breakfast, which is a big savings for families. It sure is. So check out beachclubal.com or turquoiseplace.com to book your vacation using promo code POD1 for $200 off your next stay at either resort. That's $200 off your next stay using promo code POD1. Again, that's P-O-D and the number one. We'll also put the links in the show notes. And thank you again to Spectrum Resorts for sponsoring this podcast. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Married to Reality. It's the Married at First Sight edition. I'm your co-host, John, here with my wife and co-host, it's the one only Teresa right there. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? How are you doing, Teresa? I mean, I'm doing great. Do we want to tell our friends how are we doing or what? Well, I think, yeah, I think we absolutely should. And I think it's apropos. I feel like it's only right that we're, we're on a bit of a retreat. We're on a bit of a treat while we recap the couple's retreat episode. Oh, yeah. So it, it all makes sense in a weird and wacky way. Yes, Teresa. Where are we? Guys, we are in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> Unpack your bags, Teresa. We're in Alabama. We love it. This is amazing. So... Some of you, hopefully all of you, have heard us promote Spectrum Resorts and the time has come for us to experience it in in full color. And we are experiencing it right now. We are at Turquoise Place right now. And it's beautiful. And it is stunning. It yes. is. I Obviously, we, we did the ad. We saw the photos. We got the information. And then we were we were lucky enough to get a weekend. Um, offered to us. And then, of course, we jumped at the chance because we do love to travel. And so we rolled up in, wow. Guys, Alabama. Guys, yes. <laughs> you, you heard the ad, but check out, if you haven't checked out Spectrum Resorts, definitely check it out. It is, it's, it's really nice. It's stunning. It is right on the water. We'll post some some photos or some yes. videos. Because at some point, we're just, it's no longer promo- promotion. It's no longer promoting. It's just like, you guys got to see this. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. For sure. So thank you to Spectrum Resorts for this weekend away. Absolutely. Check it out. But yes, this is our little retreat. And we're going to get to talk about the MAFS retreat. Let's do it. But first. A little housekeeping? Mm-hmm. Okay. Very quickly, we're on Instagram, at Married to Reality Pod. Check us out there. We post some memes. You guys can message us. We love chatting with you guys. Yes. So hop on over to the Instagram and follow us, at Married to Reality Pod. Also, join us on the Patreon. The Patreon is out of control right now. Patreon.com slash Married to Reality. We are doing Seeking Brother Husband. Yes. Hasn't been canceled yet, so we're still doing that. We are doing Love in Paradise, which is... Woo, this is shaping up to be quite the season. I cannot wait. We only met three couples and it's fire. We met three couples. We knew about 70% of those people already. Yeah, but not details. Like, for example, Lydia and Scott. That's sure. new. We know we knew of Lydia. But even with knowing these people, it's still incredible. Incredible. Incredible television. And then so I'm just so excited about the other three we'll get to learn. About, I think, I'm hoping on the next episode, 
So patreon.com slash married to reality for all of the love and paradise, all the seeking brother, husband. But speaking of love and paradise and speaking of my next note, which is to make sure you guys are following us. The reason you want to do that, and I don't like to give too much away ahead of time because things happen, but the reason you want to follow us is so that no matter what we drop, when we drop it, you'll get it right away. And we just dropped something recently that you may want to check out. Speaking of Love and Paradise, it was a collaboration with the DocuSweeties, and we recapped episode one of Love and Paradise. Part one on their feed, part two on ours. Part two on our free feed, guys. Part two on our free feed, yes. We should say, because we are doing Love and Paradise on the Patreon for the season. But this little collab is on the free feed. Although our part one that we did a few days ago is on the Patreon. Yeah, but I think it was a nice taste of what is on the Patreon. Like what's coming to the Patreon. So guys, check it out on the free feed and hopefully... Come over to join the fun. Yeah, join the fun on Patreon if you if you like Love and Paradise or and Brother Husband. And other things. And guys, I know we always talk about the Silva Sisters, but they just ended. And the podcast and the show, I have to say, the show was amazing. And we loved podcasting about it. And that's also on the Patreon. Yeah, you can go back in time and listen to the Silva Sisters. You can listen to our podcast previous coverage of love and paradise we did season two on the patreon there's a there's a ton of content over there so check it out i mean we are coming up on a year we started the patreon i think it's gonna be a year in july i think you're right so i know it's april <laughs> but well, we'll get there soon enough but, so check it out yeah. patreon.com slash married to reality and last but not least if you haven't left us a review if you could do that it means a lot to us it helps the podcast get out there so please if you if you haven't left a review you can rate you can review please and if you leave a five-star review we will read it on the main podcast well i hate saying that on the 90 day podcast on on, the bread and butter yeah i had to like this is really tough for me to say but that's why it's our bread and butter is because we are an international couple ourselves yes that's why i call it the main it was the first i should stop calling the main podcast because a ton of people listen to this podcast too that probably don't listen to the night. All day. our podcasts are the main. Yes, but listen, our first. We don't do things first. we don't enjoy, but yes. Our first. We started, we started with 90 Day because that's what just made sense to us. Sure does. In this weird and wacky world, that somehow, some way made sense. Where in the world did you pick up the word, the word wacky? You said it like three times in Today the past or, 10 minutes. Yeah. I, oh, weird and wacky. I probably because we're in Alabama and everyone's on that wacky tobacco. I would love to be on a wacky tobacco. You come down. It doesn't there. mean like a smoking something. You are on a Modelo One right now. Modelo Juan. Juan. Uh. Oh boy. Can we get into this? <laughs> can we? Can we talk about the reason we're here? Married at first sight, season sixteen, episode sixteen. Sixteen yeah. squared. I'm wondering when is this thing ending? Because I feel like we're coming up. Towards the end, but there is no ending in the near future. At least I haven't seen the previews of them trying to decide. Yeah. Right? I feel like in, it, it would be too soon, but I always feel like it's like 17 episodes plus, maybe 17 episodes plus D-Day. I could totally see them all of a sudden at the end of next episode being like, next week, decision day. And we're just like, wait, what? Like, yeah. Warn me. Give a guy a warning. I got to brace myself. For a oh, decision yeah. day. Oh, yeah. But it I does, do, too. It does seem like we're getting there because I think they're like two days or two weeks left. Well, he, these are, these couples are interesting. Like, it's a, I almost feel like none of them are happy, but none of them really hate each other. So it's like they're still like kind of getting along, but not to the point that they can make it. The, the standout couple of the season was Chris and Nicole. It's the first couple we caught a glimpse of this episode. And yeah, even them the cracks are starting to really show when they, when they're driving, they hit the road and they're heading to the cabin in the woods. The cracks are really starting to show because let's not forget, Chris doesn't want to move in after decision day, which I don't understand why he's doing all these little things. Like, uh, I don't want to skip ahead, but he does care for her. He loves her. Right. He said it. Why wouldn't you want to move in? I think the whole reason was our leases are not ending. I resigned. It's like, well, first of all, brother, you didn't have to resign for 12 months or however long. You could have resigned for a month or three months. 
So I think it's that. I think it's financial, which again, you can't count anyone's money. Maybe he doesn't have an extra pen to spare. How is it financial? Combining the leases would make it cheaper for both. For both. Let's say they each pay 2000 a month, right? Well, maybe you get a one bedroom or two bedroom for 3000 a month. Yeah. And now you both say $500. That makes a lot of sense. I'm thinking maybe they can't rush into finding a place. They got to decide where to live, where the dog's going to live. And so maybe they need more than the two weeks that's left. Or I think maybe the lease. Oh, no. Well, no. both of their leases are up during like the, towards the end of this, right? Towards the end of decision day. That's where their leases are up. So they had to decide. And yes, like when they had to decide, because you always have to tell these apartment buildings two months ahead. I get yeah. that. I would say, yes, it was smart that they, they didn't say, oh, we don't want to renew because we're going to make it without knowing if they're going to make it, right? Right. The but, day hasn't happened yeah, yet. Yeah. Yeah. And this was like the beginning of uh, the relationship. But they could have, as you said, renew for three months. That's what I'm and saying. And see how it works. Don't renew for 12 months. But that's what I'm saying. The three months is expensive. If any of you guys have lived in an apartment, I'm sure a ton of you guys have, we have and do. You get that sheet 60 days prior to your lease ending and it says, well, if you sign for 12, it's this much. If you sign for six, it's this much. And let's just throw out a number. If your if your lease, if your rent is a thousand for 12 months, then it'll be like for three months, it's like 1700. So it's like, whoa. So it's a lot of money to try True. to do one of those short term leases. True, but they still like should have, I don't know. I get it and I don't. The thing I don't get, this is Chris's idea, but he doesn't seem to have... A plan B. He doesn't seem to have an option. It's not like, well, we're not going to move in, but then in six months, we're going to get a place when our leases end or you'll move into my place. He has no other option or no other idea or thought other than we're just going to live separately. Yeah, that's not going to work for Nicole. And she has anxiety because of this. And she says, listen, it's going to be tough. We need to look for a place that allows three dogs. Yeah. So say goodbye to all these fancy apartment complexes because for sure. it seems like two dogs minimum. I mean, two dogs, two dogs maximum. This is like, sign me up for the two dog minimum apartment <laughs> complex. <laughs> but yeah, you can rent a house. You can rent a condo. You can rent anything that, that will allow three dogs, I'm sure. It, yeah, it just makes me think they're not as in love as they're pretending to be, maybe. I think they are, but I think Chris is just afraid. I think Chris just, I think Chris had his heart broken so many times that even though he is all in or trying to be, he's still kind of realistic thinking, okay, well, shit can still go down. Like I need to think and put myself first in a way. I think Nicole is all in. It's pretty clear she's all in. Chris, he he wants to be the guy who who gives people what they want. He wants to be a yes man. He's not. We've learned this because of the dogs and because of this living situation. But he wants to be the yes man. He doesn't want to be the bearer of bad news. And I think there's a chance he'll, he'll say no on decision day. And he doesn't want Nicole to be in a bad position when it comes to a living arrangement. He won't say no. He, if he, if he was, if he was going to say no, he would not be doing all these little posts. That was the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my it life. It was. Please don't do that. I mean, it's not a scavenger hunt. We'll just jump right ahead because there's nothing to talk about. I would he, be mad at you that I'm not winning anything. He just littered, basically. He threw pieces <laughs> of paper on a balcony. I was like, go find your compliments. How much you give her compliments face to face? Why are you making her hunt for them? Yeah, I mean, I get it. He's trying to do something fun because she seems like a girl who always need some assurance because she isn't comfortable and or confident in her own body and with her experience. Like I get that he's trying to do something he thinks she'll like. Then do an actual scavenger hunt. Right? To win something. He's like taped two pieces of paper on a deck and was like, over there, over there. If you told me it's a scavenger hunt and I would find nothing, I would be mad at you. I, I agree with you. Let's talk a little bit about Jasmine and Eris, though, because they're also in the car heading up to the cabin. Jasmine brought these icebreaker cards. And at first I was like, oh, she brought them up for the cabin so everyone would have a game to play. They could break the ice. Like, it's a drinking game. No, it was for it was for the car ride. I'll tell you what. So we've been to uh, Nashville and we've been to. Gatlinburg. Yes. It's, four, it's a four hour car ride. 
from Nashville to Gatlinburg. Yeah. I thought I was gonna say two and a half, but okay, it's four. Thought, it's 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 three forty five. I'm okay. rounding up. So imagine someone who doesn't get along, who has nothing in common with the other person. You're stuck in a car for four hours. Oh my gosh! Oh. Good for Jasmine for bringing these freaking cards. It's very smart. It's very gonna, smart. It's going to encourage conversation, but it's just a huge red flag. It points to exactly where they are in this relationship. That you guys have been together for almost two months and you need cards to converse? Yes, they do. We all know that. Look at their relationship. Last week, Jasmine was out. She was like, okay, he's dancing with the instructor over yeah. me. I'm done. But there's enough to talk about right there. That's a 45-minute conversation right there. You don't need cards saying, um, who would struggle more if we broke up? Well, 45 minutes, then you have 30 more hours. And if you stop? <laughs> Touche. Um... The other thing I noticed besides the cards, Eris was like the only, and I, sorry, I'm going to do stereotypical gender roles, and they're actually not the gender roles in our relationship, but Eris was the only guy not driving. He made Jasmine drive. Yeah. And of course, it's like, feed me grapes, fan me down, I'm the king. Oh. Chris drove, Clint drove, Jasmine drove. Or maybe Jasmine is like me, and she needs to drive. Like I need yes. to, I need to drive. Otherwise my car, right? If I'm a passenger, one hour would feel like five and we do five, six hour long road trips. I would, I don't know what I would do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just to be completely transparent, Teresa drove here, which was a several hour Teresa drive. Teresa drives all the time. But she I, drives all the time. But I love it. I prefer it. And you have a nicer car than me. I have, an, yeah, I have a bigger car, more comfortable. I just got it guys. I'm very proud of it. It was very hard for me to. I let go of my old baby, but yes, but I, I enjoy it. And for me, cause I get car sick unless I drive. So I have multiple reasons why I do the driving. Yeah, it's a good insight. But if I was like, Hey John, I'm tired. I have a headache, something you will drive. Sure. So, Absolutely. but yeah, you, you made a good point with Aries that he just likes being pampered. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So everyone arrives at the house. There was a lot of bear foreshadowing. I loved it. And like we've been there and we saw zero bears. We heard about a bear the night before. We'd go yeah. we'd, we'd go out and we'd walk around this little cabin neighborhood and saw nothing. But then the next day people told us, oh, did you see the bear? Did you hear about the bear? And we're like, no. I'm glad because we walked around in the dark smoking cigars. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the bear would be like. So... Love this house. I'm obsessed with this house. Beautiful. Beautiful house. It was like, uh, you can get, a lo- there are a lot of cabins that are kind of like built in this way that you kind of are built, built into a mountain in a way, but you have like, you have an overall on one side and mm-hmm. the other side is kind of a row. That's a cabin we rented. It was significantly smaller. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's the two of us, right? But it was the same thing. Like one side was a view and the other side, there was a road and a parking. Yeah. yeah. It's a very cool house. Did you hear Clint? As soon as he goes in, he's like, uh, I think I'll take the starboard side. It's not a boat. Clint, I, I didn't pick up on it. Because Sailor Clint is, is speaking the boat lingo, of course. I, honestly, Clint, and I talk about this with a lot of our friends. Hello, ladies. You know who you are. Clint grew on me like so much so that I would totally be his friend. Like he's not my type. I would say maybe out of all these guys, he's probably the best looking one. Okay. But in general, like not necessarily my type, but I would be his friend. He's okay. so freaking yeah. chill. So chill. I love it. He likes to experience life, which I can get behind. So I, I would totally. Same. Kirsten, she wasn't sailor mode. She was realtor mode. She's like, oh, look yeah. at this living room, the extended island. Yeah. There's a wet room. She's like, which, look, at, look at the stairs, the large windows. Which is exactly what my mom would do. When, oh, she, yeah. when she walks into a place, starts <laughs> rattling off these terms. I'm like, all right, <laughs> is this a, a, my mom or an MLS listing? What's happening here? <laughs> Who signs the guest book when they arrive? No one. Yeah, this is a, they're, oh, come on, come on, sign the guest book. No, you sign a guest book. When you when, leave. When you have something to write. Oh, exactly. thanks for the time. It was amazing. We hung out every night on the back patio and played cards. Our kids learned to walk in the backyard. Like you or, write a story. Or it was so bad we found dog poop in the shower. Or that. Yeah. I don't know if Johnny Depp was staying there, Amber Heard, but sure, there's poop in the shower. <laughs> or blipping. 
<laughs> oh, Blippi, we've learned a lot about uh, I thought like that kitty show, and I just saw a disgusting article about gross. It's a little gross. Yeah. Well, um, you should definitely look into, parents out there, look into who your children are watching. Yeah. And if they're watching Blippi, just don't let them. <laughs> Teresa, because- <laughs> Teresa sent an article to my <laughs> sister, like, hey, isn't this what your daughter watches? And my sister's like, yeah, we knew about that. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> I mean, hey, if he cleaned up his act and cleaned up his friend, then I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't. I no don't, harm, no foul. Like, listen, that whole, th- this whole dude is creepy without him shitting on his friend. <laughs> Very true. It just, to me, just screams, oh, this guy has wanted to be famous, yeah. has wanted to go viral since the internet was invented. For those who don't know, this dude, Blippi, that apparently kids are obsessed with, before he was Blippi, he was trying to do wild videos on YouTube and he shot on his friend. He sure did. Like, like actually, like diarrhea. And then he was trying to like hide it. And there was some legal stuff because oh he went from this to be uh, the face of a for kids the age of zero to three. Oh and so... He was just trying to get in the mindset. I feel like kids, they shit on themselves. They shit on each other. Maybe it was just getting in the mindset. Dude, just hell of the kids watch SpongeBob SquarePants. Help me so much. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Blippi needed a sponge <laughs> on his friend's <laughs> pants. <laughs> so, what a creep. So here we go. Here's what's happening tonight at this little retreat. We're going to have a Mr. Couples retreat. There's a pageant for the men. Okay. I, I didn't like this. I thought it was like, ew, like why are you doing it? It's so weird. Is it because Jasmine was a pageant queen? But if she if she was and you're doing this because of it, so what's the next next thing? Are you going to like put up listings for houses and you're going to be judging who has the best listing because Kirsten, <laughs> because Kirsten is a realtor? Or you're going you're gonna to mentor some kids because Shaq? Yeah, or you're going to market some ads because, what's her name? Nicole is a senior marketing specialist, whatever she markets. I don't know. I didn't hate, I didn't hate the idea. I just thought it kind of fell flat. Yes. Maybe that's why I didn't like it because it wasn't, the only part I liked was Clint. Okay. You take it easier over there. A lot of you ladies liked Clint. I saw the messages too. Because he had fun with it. I saw the messages. And it's not even like his man bun that Gina thought it was a vibe, but it wasn't. It was not. But he had fun with it. Unlike freaking Shaq, he's like, oh, I have to, I have to get it. And uh, Nicole's like, baby, like Chris, we have to win. You're on my team. It's like, oh, take it easy. Well, so let's let's high level it here. It okay. is the is the Mister Couples retreat. There's two two stages, and and yes, Jasmine, the pageant queen, is hosting. So the first stage is the best outfit. So everyone dresses up. Yes. The second stage is an onstage question. Yes. Okay. So Eris first with his outfit. No. Gray and red checkered suit or like a red crew neck shirt. Not good. And then his classic necklace. Not good. Shaq looked like um, like a Foot Locker employee at their holiday party. He had like a pinstriped suit. This wide pinstripe jacket and white tux pants. He looks like he has a little shop with old school lemonades and chocolates in a New England town. Yeah, not a vibe for me. Um, no, but, but better than Eris. Better than Chris, who looked like Howard Stern went into professional wrestling. Well, I think that Chris is so uncomfortable with doing a pageant that he just put a wig on and just had fun with it, which I also appreciate having fun with something that you don't feel comfortable. You can tell that Eddie's in shock. They want to be sleek. They want to be oh, like, yeah. okay, yes, like we got it. And then you have, you have Chris who's probably like, I'm probably not, this is not my thing. Let me make it a little funny so I can feel a little more comfortable doing it. And then you have Clint who's just like, YOLO. <laughs> I was confused by Chris because I, I thought, oh, he brought a, he brought this wig for this pageant? Nah. But no, he brought it for the 80s party. Yeah. It doubled. I liked it. I pageant. liked that he took it and he turned it around so it felt comfortable for him. Yeah. And then Clint, leather jacket, no shirt, man bun, and winter boots. I have those boots. Shout out to those boots. The Sorrells. Great boots. Yes. So then we get to the on stage question and answer portion. I, this is the only time that I was like, okay, Eris, you're onto something. <laughs> so the first question, if you were a marriage counselor, what would be your advice? Clint says, learn to love yourself and then spread that love amongst everyone else. Which is good too, because if you are unhappy with yourself, 
you will not be happy with other people. You cannot expect others to make you happy if you're unhappy with who you are. Couldn't agree more. And the way Clint said it was solid. Shaq follows up and, and basically gives a worse version of Clint's answer. Yeah. Because all he says is, focus on your own happiness, which, yeah. is, which is what Clint said. But then he spun it around like, you yeah. gotta love yourself, focus on your own happiness. But then you can make other people yeah, happy. Kirsten didn't like it. Okay. I was going to say, Aries, I liked his second answer, not the first answer. Okay. Um, still going with this question. Chris just says, be true to who you are. And Aries says, find out what turns your partner on. Yeah, no, hmm. I don't agree with Aries. I mean... That's not the main thing. And Aris, dude, you should know that. So next, the divorce rate is nearly 50%. If you were president, what would you do to fix that? And th- this question was asked and I was very impressed with all of their answers because I sat there and went like, what could a president do to fix yeah. the divorce rate? But I did like Aris's question, Aris's answer because he said, raise the age to 30. And it's so true. Okay. When we got married, I was 29. But almost there, right? But we did took our time. And I think if I got married at 25, let's say, or 26, which would be us dating for a year, right? Would have, I, was, I was not ready. I was, okay. I was barely ready to date okay. and have a serious relationship. But if, if you're going to use that logic, then you have to raise the age for everything. Like raise the age of going to college. Because you go to college, you're 17, 18. You don't know what you want to oh, no, do. No, no. You're choosing a major. This is what I would do. Do it the European way, drink and do everything at 18, right? Go to college at 19. That's what we do in Europe. Okay. Because we have a year, as a passion check, for an extra year of high school. And then enjoy the college. You're in college until you're 23. Or if you do, you go for your master's 24, 25, right? And then take the final job. Enjoy your career, do whatever you like. Or if you don't go to college, just focus on your craft. Meet someone, date, mingle, find what you like, what you don't like. And once you find what you like, date it for a little bit. And then be like, oh shit, this is it. I want to get married. But at the t- by the time you get there, you are maybe 29 or 30. And it's the right time. Yeah, but like some people so just behind. jump on things. But you're so behind. If you, if you enter your field at 30... You're going to be... What are you, why are you entering your field at 30? You're you getting like, married at 30. I said you're finishing college, let's say 25. Yeah. Take the five years to focus on your career. Oh, I thought you take, said date like different jobs. No, date different people. Oh, have I thought fun. we were talking about careers. No, have fun. I was talking about both. I thought you were being like very philosophical. You're like date around the job market. Well, See what you like. No, I, I, well, you can do that. You do you. But I think when it comes to love, I think so many people rush into things, rush and rush, and then it doesn't work. And it's like, we've all dated. I've, I've dated a guy who I dated for a week and I'm like, this is not going to, this is horrible. Right. But there are also some people who maybe are lonely and who will be like, you know what? Maybe it's not going to work out, but maybe I'll give it a shot. Yeah. And they might, you might be in this, I'll give it a shot for three years and it's going to suck. And maybe the, I'll give it a shot proposes and you feel like you cannot, that that's it for you, right? And then you say yes. And a couple of years later, you kind of realize, oh shit, this is really bad. Let me get a divorce. Well, here's what I'll say to, to that and to Eris's suggestion. I don't know the exact number, but people are definitely getting married later in life. Nowadays, yes. And oh, it's that's, good. What we're, that's what we're talking about. And it's yes. good. If it, was, if it was 1950, sure, people are getting married when they're 20, around that age. Now, I, I think people are getting married 27, 28, 29, yeah. 30. And I, I think that's good. And I don't even say, like, he said, raise the age to 30. I know it's ridiculous, but in a way that it doesn't mean that you have to wait to be engaged until you're 30. Maybe you get engaged when you're 28 and you plan a nice wedding. You make sure everything works. And then if you're still engaged by the age of 30, then do it. Okay. Well, I, I thought his answer was a little weak, a little ridiculous. I thought Shaq actually had a reasonable answer. What did he say? I forgot. Free marriage counseling. That's pretty good. If you need marriage counseling, then no. If if you no, if you need marriage counseling after you've been married for a while, then go get it for free. If you need marriage counseling when you're dating, yeah, don't marry that person. These people are married at first sight, so it's kind of a little different story. But. If you've been together for years and then you're like, you know what, things we need a reset, sure, go get free counseling. I guess. Okay. So Chris says give money to spend on your loved one. Mm, no. Well, um, that's dumb. <laughs> no. 
So you would you would you would use taxpayers' money to buy something for yeah, Nicole. That's not thoughtful. So he doesn't divorce you. That's not thoughtful. That's what I'm saying. Chris, everything about Chris, he wants to pretend he's thoughtful. Oh, I'm gonna buy you gifts. Yeah, with someone else's money. It's only thoughtful if it's your money. Yeah. And then Clint says a penalty for divorce where you give everything to your spouse. I kind of think that exists already. Yeah, it's it's called it's called prenup or not prenup or yeah. something like that. Something like that. And then the other question, do you still believe in traditional marriage roles? Shaq says they've switched. The roles have switched and women are stepping up more than men. I don't know if he's trying to get some bonus points there. I wouldn't say anyone's stepping up more than anyone in a general sense. It's a case by case situation. I think it's, it doesn't matter who's more successful in the relationship when it comes to like work and money. It does? It does not. Like, I, let's well, say again, if, case by case. Yeah. But let's say as an example, and it's not true, unfortunately, but I made twice as much as you did. Yeah. Would, it, would it bother you if we just, you know, I, I no. would never, I would never be like, oh, John, you make less money. We would just be living a, a happy, happy life as we do now. Right. Yeah. But I, I bet in some relationships it would matter. I think it matters if the person who makes more money brings it up and throws it in the other person's face. I think that hurts and that can sure. definitely do some damage, especially if it's a woman making more than a man. But if, if that's what you decide and you roll with it, then I think it's fine. Yeah. I don't think it's as easy as deciding. I think a lot of people were raised to believe the man's the breadwinner. The man yeah. brings home the bacon. We're getting away from that. It's going to take more than a few years. It'll take a generation or two. And then, well, we could strive for true equality. Yeah. But I think there's still people who believe, oh, no, I ha it's my duty as a man to make more. And if I don't, I'm a failure. So I think it's case by case basis. True. Um, Clint says people don't have the same sanctity in marriage, which is very true. You guys are on a show called Married at First mm -hmm. Sight. So I would agree with that. And then Eris says if a bear comes, I'm going to protect my lady. From that bear. Well, in our case, I would be protecting John. You got that right. <laughs> so it goes to the judges. Kirsten, Nicole, and Gina, they have to rank the men. Okay. I did not understand this at all. Third, second, first, and the king. How many pageants have you been part of? It's usually third, second, first. And then the fourth place is a potato. No. They're saying runner-up. So a third runner-up is fourth place. Because then the runner-up is second place. I don't understand that at it's all. It's okay. Third runner up, Mr. Courageous and Outrageous, Clint. Yeah, I, I think Clint should have won. This was rigged from the start. This was. Second runner up, Mr. Style and Swag, Shaq. Runner up, Mr. Showstopper, Chris. And the winner, Mr. Couples Retreat, King Eris. It was literally the opposite. Chris, Clint should have been the king, then Shaq, then Chris, and then I Eris. I completely agree. I think the ladies knew if Ares doesn't win, he's going to bitch all weekend. So let's just give it to him and enjoy ourselves. Maybe. Yeah. That was probably smart. <laughs> also, he was trained by the professional. His, he, he is married to a professional pageant queen. So he does have a leg up on the old Well, yeah. It would be probably a, a very disappointing for... What's her name? Jasmine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 16 episodes in, guys. For Jasmine if he didn't win. Yeah. So okay. competition's over. Everyone gets ready for bed. Clint and Gina share in a bedroom. Yes. And it feels good. They said it feels fine. They're in the bed. But they it, feel like friends. It seemed a little awkward, just a little, but they were making the best of it. There was no pillow barriers, right? There was no great wall of pillows. Because I feel like they are okay with each other. They're comfortable, but they're friends. Yeah. Imagine sharing a bed with your friend. Not yeah. a female friend. Forget I, about it. I can't imagine that. I can't imagine sharing a bed with a friend who should be more. A friend who is my wife. I mean, we are friends, but you know what I'm saying? They just need to bang it out. Yeah, like we do. Jeez, Teresa. <laughs> All right. On that note, I think we should take a quick break. We will tell you about our sponsor for this episode. Is it the sponsor we're sitting in? No, I think that one runs first. Okay. This will be a different sponsor. <laughs> oh. All right. So... You will hear about our sponsor for the episode, and then we'll be back in a second. All right? We'll be back. Guys, I'm super excited about our new sponsor for the pod. You guys know that John hates when I talk about working out, but it's a big part of my lifestyle. Well, 
Something else has become a part of that lifestyle, and it's called Fit Aid Energy Drinks. I'm actually drinking the blackberry pineapple right now, and I could try to describe how good it is, but right now you can actually save 40% of your first order of 24 cans of Fit Aid Energy plus free shipping. Wild! So you can try it for yourself. You guys just need to visit www.drinkfidei.com slash married to reality. One more time. www.drinkfidei.com slash married to reality. And make sure you put the www in the URL. And I'm looking at John and he's uh, he's also drinking a can of something delicious. You want to tell us about it, Jonathan? Uh, yeah, you actually just caught me mid-sip right there, Teresa. I am drinking the peach mandarin flavor. I think it's my favorite. It's refreshing. It's delicious. But the best part, all the flavors are 100% naturally sweetened with none of that gut-killing aspartame, no sucralose or ace K. Words I can barely say. Words I don't want to hear Teresa even try to say. <laughs> Plus, Fit8 Energy is packed with all the essential vitamins, minerals, and nutrients you need after a workout, like branched-chain amino acids, glucosamine, electrolytes, turmeric, omega-3s, and vitamins B, C, D3, and E. And maybe my favorite part, Fit8 has 200 milligrams of clean caffeine from green tea. Clean caffeine from green tea, Teresa. <laughs> so I get the energy I need without any of the synthetic ingredients. I love that. Do you want to know what my favorite part is? I think I can guess, but tell me, Teresa. My favorite part is that Fit8 Energy is only 15 calories per can. And it comes in four very delicious flavors, including mango sorbet, yum, Raspberry hibiscus, yum. And of course, peach mandarin and blackberry pineapple, yum, yum. So like Teresa said, right now we're giving our listeners 40% off your first order of 24 cans of Fit8 Energy plus that free shipping by going to www.drinkfitaid.com slash married to reality. Again, www.drinkfitaid.com slash married to reality. We'll also put the link in the show notes. So check it out. And thanks again to Fit8 for sponsoring this podcast. And we're back. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Erezate. Just Teresa. I was doing Pig Latin. What? Is, what? Erezate. What does it mean? Pig Latin. You, you never heard of Pig Latin? I think pig like wink wink. Mm -hmm. Latin. Honk, honk. What is that? Is that an American thing? Uh, it's a Latin thing. Um, pig Latin is, I'm going to teach you this and you will be trilingual. You will become a trilingual. So you take a word or a name. You remove the first, you remove the first letter, mm -hmm. put it on the back of the word and, ah. then, and then add the A sound. So my name would be Anjay. I hate it. I took the J, I put it at the end and then added A. Anjay. I you're, hate it. You're a resate. It hurts my brain. I don't want to, I don't even want to talk about it. Take a sip of that ear bay. I hate it. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about Gatlinburg. It's our first morning in Gatlinburg. I love Gatlinburg. Well, uh, I love the I Smokies. Too. Let me just put it this way. I love the Smokies. We kind of like drove through Gatlinburg because we went there during like deep COVID when we were like, let's get out in the nature and rent a cabin for ourselves yeah. so we don't have to interact with people. Yes. But Gatlinburg did look cool. Gatlinburg's like the Jersey Shore. Gatlinburg's like a Jersey boardwalk in the middle of Tennessee. Yes, and isn't that a Dollywood or is that in the yes. town? It's in the town next Pigeon to Forge. it. Yeah, Pigeon Forge. Yeah, we didn't go to Dollywood. We should, well, because of COVID, we have to true. sanitize everything. True. Uh, COVID didn't exist there, so. That's very <laughs> true. That's very true. So first morning in Gatlinburg, Eris and, and Jasmine are waking up fighting because there was this argument over them not meditating together, which is hilarious because this is the opposite of what meditation should do for you. Meditation should, should relax you, soothe you, and instead meditation caused them to fight. Also, okay, Aries, that, that proves again, once again that Aries is very selfish and doesn't think of anyone very else. True. And then he was like, okay, I'll meditate with you, right? Isn't meditation all about connecting with the nature, right? I don't know. I've never done it. Well, me neither, but I, I, I get the idea. I get the idea. <laughs> so listen to us to go off on meditation. I get the idea. Why is he meditating with headphones in? So here's what I think. At first, I thought they were both wearing no. headphones. Then I saw Jasmine just had these white earrings. Yeah. I think because he was leading the meditation, I think he was listening to like a meditation app and just reciting what it was saying to him. 
Oh, uh, no, I think he was just, he was just being honest. He wears headphones around her all the time. That's a good point. Disrespectful. That's a good point. Am I right? So that, that they, they're able to smooth things over by meditating again. Chris and, and Nicole. Okay, here's the little scavenger hunt surprise, which is Ugh. not much of a scavenger hunt, not much of a surprise. It was not a price. Again, if you do a scavenger hunt, you got to win something. Yes. I'm all I, about winning. I also think to do a scavenger hunt, you need clues. There's usually clues involved. It's not just like spin around in a circle and look for the pieces of paper. You find one clue, it helps you find the next clue, which helps you find the next clue, and ultimately you find your, yeah. your treasure. I mean, again, like I think it was nice of him to think of something to lift her spirits because she said, I don't even want to be here. I just want to do something with Chris. Like I don't I didn't want to be on a capital retreat, but I'll zip it and I'll have fun. Yeah. We see a bear. <gasps> a beautiful multiple bear. And these bears run on a scavenger hunt. Beautiful bear. They're scavenging. Um a flock of bears or, or a school of bears. Black bears. A sleuth of black bears. Yes. I think there were like a bunch of like siblings. Maybe there was a mom somewhere. Oh, there was definitely a mama bear somewhere, which is why I think what Clint did is pretty idiotic. Well, it's not because you can scare black bears. Okay, which is not necessarily what you want to do. You don't want to surprise bears. No, but you want to... You, you don't you, want to... Uh, what if you, you stop, if you stop, like this, this is your area, right? I know it's their home, but they're around your cars, around your house. There is a chance of like, they can sniff all the people and stuff. So the bears are kind of unease. So if you show them that's your territory, then I think you can, the bears will back off. But if you, if you come across a bear in the nature and that's the bear's territory, then you don't want to really interfere. But Clint was injecting himself into that situation. They were safe inside. Why go out? Why put yourself? I think he wanted to take a look. I would probably take a look too. I don't think I would let you. You would not let me to take a look at the bear? If we were safely behind a door, I wouldn't say, yeah, go out there. If it was just, if, honestly, if it was just a mama bear or just a papa bear, maybe. But you see the cubs, mom's going to get protective over the cubs. I guess. It could go sideways I real mean, quick. I, listen, listen, we are pretty good bear experts. So I don't take bears. Um, lightly? Lightly, thank you. I don't, uh, we have a bear spray. We know what's up. We know the difference between all these bears. So yes, definitely you have to be safe around bears. You have to respect them. But I thought Clint still kept his distance. He was behind a car. It's not like he was trying to pet a bear. It looked like he was trying to sneak up on them, which I thought was a terrible idea. Maybe. Honestly, if I'm thinking about it, yes, you should never sneak up on he a bear. He was like hiding behind a car, popping around. But I think like, the bears like good. saw him or like smelled him because they started like going away. Maybe. Okay. Uh, okay. Kirsten and Shaq, they're off on a date. Everyone's got a couple's date. They're on an indoor tube ride. It was like an indoor winter slide. It was, yes, it was like a bunny hill with a snow tube. I would totally do that. I would do it too. I don't, I don't know why Kirsten was so scared. She's like, out of all the most adventurous things we've ever done, this was the most challenging. But huh? Jack loved it. Sliding down a, a small bunny hill. Where's Mac? I want to see what Mac would have done. He probably, he would probably he would cried and, and run home. But Shaq was happy that Kirsten felt uneasy. Why was he, why was he happy? About because this? it was always her like, oh, I'm the adventurous one. Uh, I'm going to do this, right. I'm going to do that. She and communicated. Shaq, and Shaq was always the nervous or the scared one. And now it's like, it's him. He's like, YOLO. And she is a little bit like, I don't know if I can do that. Right. The communication has opened yeah. up and she's feeling comfortable enough to tell him this. And yeah, so that's good. They're having a good time. But the shit afterwards kind of threw me off because I thought they were doing great and that Kirsten finally is into him, but it seemed like she's like 50-50. She's like half in, half out. Yeah, and, and I don't think Shaq is more than half in. No. So I don't I don't think it was ever that solid. Well, I think it was solid for him until all the issues. Sure. So sure. we'll see. I, I honestly thought they will say yes on D-Day until like two episodes ago. Now I'm like, I don't know. I know. Um, now, well, uh, let me rephrase. 
I always thought that Shag will say yes. And then I started feeling like Kirsten might say yes too. But now I feel like it will be Shag who says no. Yeah, he's pulling away more and more yeah, each week. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Gina and Clint, they're doing the mountain coaster. Would you do that? Yes, I would do all of this. Here's my thing. I would just be nervous that anything like this, if that is an issue, then you might fall, you might fall off of it and get stuck. So I'm not sure if I would do a mountain coaster, to be honest. <laughs> I would do this way before I did a roller coaster at Six Flags or something. Oh, I hate Six Flags. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is at least in nature. It looks well, nice. Well, if I could break, then yes. I think you can, right? I'm just like... And uh, I don't think we talked about it at all on the podcast, and maybe we did. But a couple of weeks ago, we had an injury. One of our friends got oh, injured yeah. on those freaking scooters on that are in lime. every city. And then I joined the group later. I was sober, and I was like, I don't want to do this because like, this is scary. Like I don't want to. I don't want to break my bones, right? Everyone's like, no, 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 no. Let's do this. It'll be fun. So I'm doing it, but very slowly. I'm in the back. Everyone's in the front. Luckily for John, being a, a good husband, and he was afraid that I'm going to fall. Oh, yeah. Come on. I wasn't afraid. You were afraid I'm going to fall. you were going to fall. That's yeah. what I said. Oh, I thought you, you were saying were, good, being a good husband, he's afraid. No, you were afraid that I'm going to fall. Yes. You were waiting for me. So you weren't going as fast as you would normally or as you did at the beginning. Uh-huh. And I think that's what saved you from all that accident. Maybe. Because one of our friends literally borderline died that's not true yeah she, oh, she, my even, gosh. she did she needed 11 staples in her head yeah so that that's bad that's really bad she looked dead for about 10 minutes yeah but she apparently didn't have a concussion or anything well that's good i'm happy yeah. to hear but here is my thing saying like didn't look safe to me and i knew it i was going slow and here i am yeah, I think there are far more accidents on these lime scooters, these bird scooters, than the mountain coaster. Oh, 100%. But I'm saying if I feel like something is oh, not yeah. kosher, trust, trust your gut. then I don't think I would just be going down like a crazy person. Trust, you have to trust your gut, yeah. especially when you're in control. Yeah. When it's the mountain coaster, you're scared, whatever, it's out of your hands. When you're nervous on a scooter, when you're nervous on a bike or something like that, you can get in your own in your own head and you'll actually cause the accident because you're so nervous. So definitely, if you're if you're questioning things and you're in control of it, don't do it. Yes. Okay. Um, but they finished with the mountain coaster. They survived. They sit down for drinks. Clint's like, you know, we've had our own little roller coaster, but mainly ups. And Gina agrees. She's like, yeah, things were good. Things have been good since the Dr. Pepper meeting. And I'm happy that we're doing more as a couple. We're trying to further the relationship. And she asks Clint, can you see why we're matched now? And he goes, for sure. And I'm so hopeful for, I feel like maybe all the, the couples that started strong are going to fall apart on D-Day. And maybe this couple will finish strong. Maybe, or they'll, maybe they'll say yes, but I don't see them succeeding because they friend zoned each other. True. And it's because of Clint's comments. We yeah. can't forget that. That's still sitting yeah. in Gina's I think if they sure. say yes, it would mean that they want to try because they are friends. But I don't see them working out. Mm. Like long term. I, I might know. be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see it. We still saw that spoiler, right? That hasn't happened yet. Well, oh. Don't, don't say anything, but. Yeah. So, we'll yeah. see. Jasmine and Aris, they're, they're having the most fun I've ever seen them have together, which is nice to see. They're yeah. indoor rock climbing. They're doing trampolines, playing dodgeball. It's another thing I would, I would do all of this. I would yes. do all these activities. I would do the grown up trampoline. Yeah. Flip into the phone. Yeah. So they finish their activities and they sit down to talk. And Ayers brings up how much effort he's putting in. He's like, can you tell I'm trying or do you think I'm not doing enough? And Jasmine's like, no, I can tell. I wish there was more. I wish you were more present. I wish you put down the phone, mm. the oh, the classic phone. This it's a problem in so many relationships. Fortunately, not for us. I wish you were on the phone a little more doing the social media president thing. What are you talking about? I'm I'm, I'm on point with my social media mm. president thing. Okay, I, I'll be honest. I'm not. This is not a flex alert, but 
I love that you guys message us, but a lot of you do. And like when I message you back, I want to make sure I read your message. I think about it. No, I don't just want to be like liking and responding with one word going down the line. Like I, I want to connect with you guys. And sometimes it might take me a little bit longer to get to certain messages, mm-hmm. but I feel like it's better for me to do that and then have a fun conversation with you than to just be like, oh, oh cool, thanks for messaging us. Right? That's why you're the social media president. I'm the social media president. I'm not just trying to be like in and out to say hi and bye. Like I, we all chat, yeah. but that's why I want to take my time to know that I'm chatting with you the right way, the way I want to be I chatting with friends. I take it back. Also, I need to reread it after me because I'm a t- fast typer, yeah. but all these little typos always find a way. So oh, you got that right. So they, they have almost this little, almost a little breakthrough here when mm-hmm. Eric says, I'll, I'll do more to be present. I'll be on my phone less. And he tells Jasmine, let me know. If I'm doing something that upsets you, like you brought up the phone. Okay, I'm going to make a change. Let me know if there's other things that I can address. Yeah, we'll see. I know. She says, oh, she tells the camera, what Eris is telling me to speak up, to, to be more vocal. It's actually been a problem in the past. So she knows, okay, I need to. Yeah. I forget. I think, was it Devon? I think it might have been Devon, which is like these quiet expectations or these silent expectations are are devastating to relationships yeah. because you're sitting there going, why don't they do this? Why don't they know this? Well, cause you never said anything. Yeah. People aren't mind readers. And so it's good that Eris is saying, speak up and tell me if something's bothering yeah. you. Jasmine just needs to get over that hurdle and do it. Yeah, for sure. All right. Back in the cool house. Yes. All right. They kind of like split up into like guys and girls. So guys are cooking with Clint navigating them because he is a good chef. Yes. And the girls are just chilling as girls should. Oh, okay. I'm really flipping the script on those gender rules there, Teresa. I mean, hello. Hello. Well, so the guys are cooking and Clean wants to know who's banking because he's like, I'm not. <laughs> I got to look through someone. Yeah, Chris, we may or may not. Of course you're begging because you guys said it before. Uh, no, I have banged last night. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, everyone's like, oh, yeah, where are you? I think I heard you. you know, what was that? Um. They all want to know about, they want to know about Shaq and Shaq goes, well, it's between us, but yeah, we took it slow and just happy that it happened. Yeah. He, they probably banged once. That's probably it, right? <laughs> One and done. Like in and out. So Eris asks Clint about D-Day and he says, we're taking it day by day. We're growing every day. Yeah. It seems pot, like the door is open to say Yes. Yeah, and I feel like he, I think Clint finds her attractive. Like, because again, we always talk about it. That is the aspect of the visual, the way you look, right? The physical. The physical. But once you get to know someone, it's a whole different ball game. It's a whole different ball game. In both ways. There are so many people, and, and I'm being a little hyperbolic here. There are people who I've known in life that I thought were attractive. Then I got to know them, and I thought they were unattractive. So it, it works both ways. You could find someone on the surface be attractive, then they start opening their mouth, and you're like, this person's disgusting. That's very true. I feel like you always have to... I'm going to give an example. We probably talked about it, joked about it. But for example, we, Jen and I met on Tinder, right? Mm-hmm. And from the photos, obviously, I found Jen attractive. For some reason, I thought he was short. And like short guys are not my type. I don't... I've never... Well, I you're not never, the tallest yourself. So if someone's shorter than you, they're going to be yeah, quite short. But there are guys who are shorter and I just like tall guys. It's, it's my thing, right? I sure, always have. You can't help it. I can't help it. I'm from a lot of Czech. Czech people are tall in general. Europeans. You're the smallest person. In my freaking I, yeah. family. It's ridiculous. I hate it. But anyways, <laughs> I was like, okay, he's a nice looking guy. He's a fun to talk to. He's probably short, but let me give him a shot, right? Thank because you. we had a great conversation. I wasn't going to be just like, oh, he's probably short. I'm not even no, going to try. Fine. I'll get a free drink at least. Well, that too. But, mm-hmm. but then we met. I was like, holy shit. Besides the fact that you are very tall and gorgeous, you were oh, awesome, boy. right? Yeah. So I think for them, they have first thing they see without talking is the way they look. But they need to, even if it's not, the person is not your type immediately, you should kind of pause and be like, let me get to know them. And a lot of these people don't do that. Especially in this circumstance. Exactly. Literally, the reason you are on Married at First Sight is because there are things other than the visuals that, that you're being matched 
yes. on. And so I feel like a lot of these guys, like Clint, even like Gina, I think, Aries, they're just looking at it and be like, oh, not my type. And that overpowers everything. And then they say stupid shit yeah. because they feel like it's not going to work out. But then once you get to know the person, you're like, oh, wait a minute. They're super cool. And I see, let's say Gina, I see her now. She is a little more sporty. I like it. She's mm-hmm. adventurous. I love it. She's fun. And she's very pretty besides all that. And I think he really fucked up with that stupid comment. Big time. And now I think it's biting him in his ass. Big time. Big time. So Clint just says, yeah, we're growing and, and we can continue to grow day by day. Eris agrees. He feels like they're progressing. And Shaq wants to know, well, what would it take Eris to say yes on decision day? And he just wants to see a spark. He wants to see some potential. I don't know if I buy that. Uh, because again, I think he is purely focused on the visual, the physical, the visual, yeah. the, the visual that I don't know. I don't know if, if he can create a spark if he's not attracted. So we'll see for him. And we'll Shaq see. just says, I want to meet Kirsten's family. Yeah, he said, I want to get the deeper connection because right now it seems like She's hiding everyone from me. I haven't seen the mom from the wedding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the girls, they're they're hanging out. They're chatting. They're talking about the same thing. It's the same thing. There's no real bombs here. No. Besides Kirsten I'm, saying she's 50-50. Yeah. And I think that's what Shaq is too. Yeah. Because of the communication. Yeah. But then they eat dinner and they talk about it. All, all of them together talk about the same things again. Which but then I, okay. it becomes the heiress show. It really becomes the heiress show because Clint, I think Clint's the host. Clint's hosting this dinner. Yes. And he asks the table, he asks the men, what would it, what would you need to say yes come decision day? And heiress says, I need Jasmine to speak her mind, which we've heard now more than once. Yeah, but he says this in front of everyone when it's just him and the cameras. He says, well, I need to bang. I need to be like... Yeah, yeah, but last time, and I mean last time meaning 15 minutes ago, we were talking about Eris saying, Jasmine, I need you to speak up if I'm yeah. doing something that upsets you, speak up. That's what he's saying here again. He's saying, I need her to speak her mind. Yeah, we have we have the Eris that talks to the general public and then we have the one-on-one Eris who's still trying to keep his cool image. True. I... I just, I do think this is the furthest he's come this Maybe. whole season. I mean, he's taking a lot of the blame here in front of everyone, sure, which I don't know if it lessens what he's doing, but he's saying, I haven't created a safe space for Jasmine, which is, I'll, I'll gladly listen to this because up until now it's been, I'm just not attracted to her. Yeah. Her, her booty's not big enough. Like. He's putting it all on her. Mm-hmm. Now at least he's saying, I haven't created a spa- a safe place. True, 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 true. And then we have Kirsten saying she needs to work on the communication, both yeah. of them. And then Chris is like, we don't always see eye to eye, but we always meet in the middle and I love you. Yeah, he, he dropped that, they say, the L word. Yeah. The crowd did not go wild. I thought everyone was going to be like, woo! Because everyone knew it. Like, they're the lovey-dovey couple. I guess. Like, it's honestly that even when they said it, that didn't surprise me. I'm like, about time. Okay. Because they've been talking about it since they met. Well, Nicole's been pestering yeah. Chris. Do you love me? Do you love me today? Yeah. Do you love me today? And then Clint and Gina, Gina was like, well, we've been trying to use the tools provided to us by the experts, but I didn't sign up to be married to a friend. Yeah, well, Clint says, we, we've got all this kindling. We're out here spraying gasoline and we're trying to create a spark. They just need to bang. They need enough yeah. with the fish bowls, enough with the blindfold exercises. Just have a good old fashioned romp in the hay. I just think that instead of tasting moonshine, like each got a, a mason jar of that, yeah. so you chug it Get and then you bang it out. Bang it out. You will Hold no each other longer, when you puke later, but that's going to no, bond you for life. You will no longer be friends. You will cross that bear. You're yeah. a married couple. You cross that bear? Ear. Oh, I see you said bear. Yeah. <laughs> You're too funny sometimes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dinner ends and, and poor Eris has to go home. He's missing this 80s party just as things were starting to progress with Jasmine. Yeah. He's got to leave, but maybe it's one of those situations. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Yeah. Maybe he he just said some sweet words at dinner. And now he's removing himself before he can ruin it. True. So maybe it's not the worst thing. We get this 80s party. 
no, nothing much to say here no. other than Clint goes all in, and I respect that. When when it comes to playing oh, dress yeah. up, Clint goes all in. The dance moves are second Beautiful. to none. He's he's a fun guy. I would love to throw an eighties party, but we have no friends. Yeah, I'm a, I think I could get down on a theme party. I, yeah, I like a theme party. Right? I don't do it often, if at all. But I like transporting myself elsewhere and going. You know what? It's time to party. Oh my God. I'm going to tell your mom. Mm. We are going to do an 80s Thanksgiving. Okay. Oh, Thanksgiving. I thought you were going to say our family vacation. Well, that could be fun too, but then we would have to bring in other luggage. That's true. 80s Thanksgiving. Okay. Wouldn't that be fun? No. Maybe we can like... Doesn't mean it doesn't make any sense. What did they use in the 80s? Like, did they use food dye? They can make the turkey blue. I Uh, I don't like this idea at all. But just like, it's still like dressing up for Thanksgiving to look nice. We would look 80s. I don't like this idea at all. Why not? I like dressing up, having a having a cocktail, cutting turkey. So maybe the summer vacation. The summer vacation is it's loosey-goosey. I think that. Uh, I think I like it. Call in with some, some theme party ideas. I like the 80s, but yes, call in. Okay. That's the episode. Fun episode. Couples retreat episode. Always one of my favorites. Yes. So... Thank you guys. Sorry for the delay. If you consider the delay it is, but we had the, we had the Love and Paradise collab. Mm-hmm. And so you, you got some content on Thursday. Now you get this on Friday. 15th century. Okay. Like the fun tall hair. Okay. Um, moving on. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm just thinking ahead. Okay. I was going to say, well, I'm not even going to say it. Say so. it. Well, I was going to say if you were doing a Thanksgiving theme, you do Cowboys and Indians, but I think that is, that's frowned upon these days. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a little frowned upon. Maybe if we just do Cowboys. Giddy up. Giddy up. And maybe the Indians next year. Oh boy. <laughs> no? <laughs> I don't think, I think that's called cultural appropriation. But okay. what do I know? I'm half asleep. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you to Spectrum Resorts for getting us here. This place is amazing. amazing. Check it out. There's links in the show notes for Turquoise Place, for the Beach Club. Use the promo code. You'll you'll get, I think it's $300 off. $200 yes. off. I don't and know guys, this line. don't let the word Alabama scare you. It's two minutes from Florida. Yes. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. Is but I feel like I, I, I'll be, I'll, I'll pay the ignorant card here, sure, right? Please. I just pictured Alabama is what we saw in Forrest Gump. Uh, I don't remember what we saw. Just every, time like, I, every time I think Forrest Gump, I think Savannah because of that bench. Well, that's true. But I just, I forgot that, uh, here's the thing. I forgot that Alabama has a coast and it has a beautiful oh, coast. Beautiful white sand beautiful beaches. Coast. And that's one thing that I just didn't know. And that's why I'm like mind blown, mind yeah. blown. So yes, yes, they are a sponsor, but also this place is just amazing. It's $200 off. Your next vacation. Use, use promo code POD1, P-O-D-1. Again, the links are in the show notes. Thank you to them. This is awesome. And thank you to you guys for listening. Make sure you guys follow us on Instagram at Married to Reality Pod. Check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash Married to Reality. Thank you again for the reviews. If you haven't left one, please leave one. We love the reviews. Yeah. And that's it. I think I've said it all. I said it all, guys. All right. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.